Hi, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here today with us. My name is Victor Arroyo. I'm an admissions counselor here at Columbia College Chicago. I work mainly with the Southwest Cook County area. So if you live in anywhere in the Southwest Cook County, I'm your main uh, admissions rep. So make sure you reach out to me after this presentation if you need any further support. I'm gonna introduce you to my colleague, TC. TC, would you like to talk a little bit about yourself? For sure, thanks, Victor. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is TC Liggins, Assistant Director of Admissions at Columbia College Chicago. Um, I am primarily uh, the territory manager for Chicago Public Schools, uh, located more so in the central, central west-ish area of Chicago. Um, I'm also a Columbia alumni. Uh, really, really excited to be here and, uh, you know, deliver some really great information to you all. I'm Margaret Jones. I'm actually one of the facilitators with the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling, but I'm also a Columbia College Chicago representative. I work on the north and the northwest side of the CPS school. So if you are in that area, you're definitely going to want to reach out to me. But I just want to give you all a couple of ground rules of what to expect here from us today. So um, we definitely encourage you to continue to sign up for more sessions. They will be available at IACAC.org. This recording will become available in just just about a week at the same link, IACAC.org. Um, just a couple of logistics, your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see you, we cannot hear you at all, but we hope that you laugh at our jokes and you engage with us um, in the Q&A. So I will um, let my colleagues, Victor and TC, present to you all today, but I will be here in the Q&A to kind of answer your questions as we go along. And if there's something that kind of feels um, that I feel the need that needs to be addressed aloud, um, I will um, respond to you privately and let you know that we'll handle it in the big group. But just um, as an FYI, your questions will only be able to be viewed by us as panelists. So if you don't see it pop up, just know that we see it and we'll get to you in a timely fashion. Without further ado, I'm going to pass it back over to Victor and TC um, to get started. On mute. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret, for NTC for sharing information about yourself. We are really excited to be here. So let's get started about more about Columbia College. I know some of you are here today to find out more about Columbia College to see if this is a good fit for you. Hopefully by the end of the presentation, you are going to apply. Maybe some of you are in the process of applying, but hopefully you'll get excited about the things that Columbia provides to you and become a student here. So Columbia College is located in the Southwest, um, I, I'm sorry, Columbia College is located in the South Loop. We are in downtown. We are a four-year institution, liberal arts college. We specialize specifically in the creative arts, the media arts, the liberal arts, and business expertise. So um, if you're interested in learning about anything related to the performing arts, the fine arts, to the media arts, this would be a great fit for you. But you're also going to be learning the business side of your discipline and also pursue other things within uh, business entrepreneurship. And I'll talk, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in the, the slides later. Um, one thing about Columbia College is that immediately once you come in, you are learning your, at your, uh, your discipline. So you don't have to wait until your junior or senior year to start uh, learning about your discipline. We are very hands-on. So since day one, you are creating. Since day one, you are learning about your discipline and you are creating things uh, to put into your portfolio. Um, so later on, we'll be talking more about that career exploration, career preparation, um, and other things with that. So um, Columbia College is a very diverse uh, institution. We have students from all over the US from 50 different states, including Guam and Puerto Rico. And we have students from 60 different countries. Just to give you some information as far as numbers, currently we have about 6,947 undergrad and graduate students. So we do have a grad program. If you're interested in pursuing graduate school after you finish your uh, degree with us, you can do that. Uh, currently, we have about 1,700 new freshmen enrolled for this academic school year. We have about 687 new transfer students. The average class size, I would say it's about 18 to 25 students. 
uh, that's about a 12 to 1 ratio, student, uh, both student faculty ratio. And we have about 16% of our students who are first gen students. So it's a pretty diverse campus, uh, it's a pretty diverse uh, university. You are in the uh, cosmopolitan Chicago land area, so you are going to be getting um, a very diverse feel of our city. So let's go to the next slide. I know a lot of you have a lot of questions about the costs. So let's talk about the costs at Columbia College. For a full-time student, a student who's taking 12 to 16 credit hours uh, per semester, you are looking at 28,118. So that's for a full-time student. This does not include room and board. So if you are planning to live on campus, the average cost to live on campus is about 16,000. So you're roughly looking anywhere between 40 to 44,000 per academic year if you are planning to live on campus. I know some of you are in the process right now of applying for the FAFSA. If you're not, make sure you speak with your high school counselor about that. It's really important that you fill out the FAFSA if you qualify, if you are a US uh, born citizen or a US citizen and you are a legal permanent resident. So make sure you apply for the FAFSA. Based on your FAFSA, you can also be granted additional scholarships. We do provide additional scholarships uh, for students who are attending Columbia College. You don't have to do anything based on your academics, based on your FAFSA, based on your portfolio, we will grant you those scholarships. So make sure that you submit a portfolio, make sure you submit something, uh, make sure you ask more information to us later after this presentation about uh, the scholarships that we provide, just to give you an idea of what our students have been receiving. In 2018, 2019, the average financial aid package for a freshman was about 13,000. So that's a really good deal, especially if you're receiving the uh, Pell Grant and the MAP Grant, and plus with the, the additional loans that can help you out to pay for the costs. Uh, for transfer students, the average package for our transfer students from 2018-2019 was about 12363 So make sure you fill out the FAFSA. That's really important. Let's go on to the next slide. As I mentioned before, we are in Chicago. Chicago is a cosmopolitan city. We live in an urban area. There's a lot going on. There's gallery spaces. There's so many things to do outside of school. And that you can see that as you're walking throughout our campus, you can see that throughout our city. So whatever you see within our, our city of Chicago, that's going to inspire your work. And you're going to create amazing, beautiful things that you can add to your portfolio and ultimately get an internship or get whatever you want to obtain. Uh, just to give you an idea, about 38% of our Columbia students identify as students of color. So that shows you a lot of the diversity that we have as far as students of color, but also within sexuality, gender, religion, um, students from all different backgrounds, class. You just have to come and feel uh, our campus to get a better idea of our culture at Columbia College. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, so I am an alum from Columbia College and one thing that I really enjoyed about uh, being a student at Columbia was the stellar faculty that we had. Our faculty are um, experts in their field. So whatever they're teaching, they're actually, they're either working in that or they have some type of background in that uh, field. So you're getting the best quality of education with our professors, with our faculty. Um, it's a lot of them have connection to the industry. So make sure that you establish uh, a really great relationship with your professors because they're going to be the ones who can help you find really good internships after you, uh, during your time at Columbia College. I remember when I was a student at Columbia, um, I had an internship with Quantum Point Films and a lot of that had to do with my uh, professor in documentary. So, Make sure that you establish those relationships with your faculty and professors and our professors at Columbia are, some of them are award winning. Um, they've won several awards within their discipline. So uh, we can share that information later on too and during the presentation. Let's go on to the next slide. Um, so as I mentioned before, we're hands on. It's a creative learning environment. Um, since day one, you're creating amazing work. You're really getting to know your uh, craft. You're really 
trying to figure out if this is something that you fully want to pursue during your, uh, during your time at Columbia College, or if you want to pursue other things, that's a great thing about Columbia College is that we're flexible in what you want to study. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we have, we have a media production center. It's about 35,000 square feet space with two film production sound studios, a motion capture studios, and we have more. Um, our student facilities carry a lot of uh, studio time. So if you want to um, create something at our student center or even in the dormitories, you are able to reserve time, studio time to be able to do that. So that's something that's uh, available to you as a student. We have the Getz Theater Center. It's a newly remodeled space featuring the state of the art um, courtyard theater and three black box theater spaces. So especially if you're going to theater, that's going to be where you're going to be experiencing a lot of that um, hands-on theater uh, experience. Uh, we have a fabrication facility. Uh, it's about 15,000 square feet of space in which students create jewelry, three models and more. It's really cool. Make sure when you come during open house that you get a chance to check that out. So make sure you visit us uh, virtually on open house and when you also schedule time to visit our campus when that's allowed. Let's go on to the next slide. Uh, we have about 60 different majors to choose from. Um, here's a list of all of our majors that we have. We have over 100 different minors. Um, as a student at Columbia, you can double major, you can minor, you can do an interdisciplinary um, a field of study. It's really up to you. We really want to work with our students to help them pursue their, their dreams and help them pursue what they ultimately want to study. Um, you get to go into a Bachelor's of Art, a Bachelor's of Fine Arts, a Bachelor's of Science, a ba Bachelor's of Music Composition. The Bachelor's of, of Art is a little bit more flexible in comparison to the Bachelor's of Fine Arts. It's bachelor's of Arts, Fine Arts are more specialized, uh, it's a specialized degree in which you just focus within your specific discipline. If you are interested in pursuing other things and having, let's say, a major with a double, uh, with a minor, or you want a double major, or you want to do an interdisciplinary program, then a Bachelor's of Art would be something that you would pursue. At this time, uh, my colleague will take on the additional slides and continue to talk about some of the things that we provide at Columbia College. Thank you all. Thanks, Victor. So when it comes to the core curriculum here at Columbia, um, it definitely sets us apart from other creative and media art schools. Um, through the core curriculum, you'll actually receive a solid foundation in liberal arts and sciences, along with courses in the principles of business and um, technology that are definitely woven throughout the creative economy. Um, so it's definitely essential um, to your success in your future creative career. Uh, these courses are designed to really ground your artwork, right, and ground that art education uh, with valuable critical thinking skills and the ability to think, speak, and create within a global context. Um, our faculty members um, in the area of the college are scholars, the researchers, um, they are working professionals who are excited uh, to help you explore these areas and tie them into your major. We do have an honors program. Uh, it is available for high performing students seeking a greater challenge in these like core, in the core coursework. Honors classes put you um, in a classroom with other students who are motivated uh, by challenge, right? Uh, so these classes are designed to go more in depth within the core curriculum. And when we do mention like core curriculum, we're saying like your science classes, your math, um, your English courses as well. Um, all of our applicants are reviewed for uh, honors consideration, um, and some students are offered a direct pathway into the honors program at admission. If you do qualify for honors, you'll receive a letter in the admissions packet inviting you to join. Uh, we do also recognize that some students don't, don't necessarily like hit their stride until they go, um, until they get to college, right? Um, so that's why any student with a Columbia GPA of I believe 3.5 or higher is eligible to take honors courses. Um, so even if you are not offered the honors program at the time of admission, um, you are definitely, definitely eligible um, to enroll in the honors classes as soon as your second semester at Columbia. When it comes to um, 
study abroad opportunities at Columbia. If anyone is, who is interested in um, gaining that experience outside um, of the country for a semester or shorter, uh, we do offer a variety of study abroad opportunities. Uh, we have established relationships with institutions all over the world, including places like Singapore, Australia, Ireland, the UK, China, and Germany. Uh, we also have faculty-led programs in Morocco, France, Italy, Peru, and the Czech Republic, um, Ghana, Spain, and Iceland, just to name a few. In addition, uh, students can also choose a wide variety of independent study abroad providers that have been vetted um, to make sure that your credits are transferring to Columbia. Um, so if you do an independent thing that we don't necessarily have um, already established here at Columbia, uh, you can also do that and uh, just make sure that you are going to be able to transfer those credits a little bit um, easily. Uh, we also offer a semester in LA program uh, for qualified juniors and seniors. The program is housed at Raleigh Studios, um, which is one of our longest, um, you know, one of our longest partnerships that we have at Columbia. Uh, Raleigh Studios is also um, continuously operating, like, one of the longest continuously operating studios in the country. Uh, it's housed, uh, it's currently housing uh, black Blackish, um, other shows by Shonda Rhimes, um, and a few like Netflix shows as well. Uh, the programs, uh, the L semester in LA program features courses in acting, in film, in fashion, in producing, and it provides our students with um, opportunities for networking and professional development as well. Um, if you want a little bit more information about Semester in LA, you can definitely connect with us afterward, um, or you can visit our website for a little bit more information. Columbia alums are making some really, really great marks, um, not only just at the institution, but all over the country and beyond. Uh, some of our alums are working for places like ABC, Adidas, Apple, uh, the Chicago White Sox, Disney, the Field Museum here in Chicago, Google, HBO, uh, MLB, MTV, NBC, a whole bunch of other acronyms, um, Saturday Night Live, Second City, TBS, Telemundo, and a whole bunch of other places as well. Um, we are an institution that definitely believes in our alumni. We love establishing those relationships with our alumni who are definitely doing work on um, a greater scale, but also doing things here locally, right? Um, so when you do graduate from Columbia, you are joining a really, really great, like vast um, alumni network. We have over 14 um, chapters across the, the United States. Um, and many of them, many of our alums are definitely working in some cool places that um, you definitely want to get in contact to learn more about um, once you are a part of that network. Our residence centers are an extension of, um, you know, our creative learning environments. Every Columbia Residence Center does have um, what's designed with creative students in mind. Uh, they are all located in the heart of, of our campus, uh, all are walking distance away from like our classroom spaces. Um, all new students outside of um, like the commutable distance are expected to live on campus housing um, within their first year. Uh, it is not like, something that is mandatory across the board. But if you are coming from somewhere in like LA, if you're coming from you know, an international distance, we definitely expect you to live on campus. But if you are a student who is coming from um, say like Schomburg or coming from you know, the Chicagoland area, um, housing is something that you do not have to do um, while you are a student here. Um, do you know that as a first year student, you are prioritized um, to have some sort of on-campus housing uh, spot um, and it's definitely available all four years if that's something that you want to do. We do offer gender inclusive housing options as well. Honor students can live um, on one of our honors floors um, that is de designated for honor students only uh, but do know that it's not required like as an honor student to join that community um, if you are living in the dorms. 
There is not one specific residence center for freshman students, and you can definitely check out more information and, you know, do a virtual tour of our residence facilities um, if you go to column.edu slash virtual tour. So one of the cool things that I love speaking about is our application process. Uh, we know that some of you have already applied. We know that some students are, you know, not yet all you know ready for that yet. Um, so we're just going to keep this as an overview. Um, so those who are high school sophomores or juniors, um, you should definitely be aware that the of the application requirements, the procedures and deadlines um, definitely can change from year to year. Um, so this information might be exactly what um, what you need right now. Um, we begin accepting applications in August. Um, and we do start uh, releasing application decisions in October, so that is coming up soon. And we are on a rolling admission basis after that. Um, some of the required materials, um, we want to see either our application or the Common App. Uh, we do uh, require a writing sample. Um, test scores are optional. This year we, um, are accepting ACT and SAT, and we are aware that, you know, some students have not taken that yet, um, but do know that we are in a test optional school. So if you want to submit those scores, you can definitely do so. Um, if not, it's completely up to you. Uh, we will uh, definitely use those scores only for like class placement and a small portion of um, academic uh, based scholarship opportunities. Uh, but again, it's not a big deal if you do not step, if you do not submit those. So when you are ready, you can definitely take these steps. Uh, we are more than happy to work with you throughout the process. Myself, Victor, Margaret, um, all of us within the admissions office are definitely here to walk you through this process and make it as smooth as possible. And then when it comes to uh, portfolios and auditions, I know a lot of students do have this question, um, you know, where you're in art school, right? And you must you know, require auditions and portfolios. Um, so we are not an institution that requires those. Um, you can definitely submit your digital portfolio or video auditions, um, you know, known as creative work samples here at the institution. They are not required for our BA or BS um, programs. However, they are used for scholarship and are highly encouraged, right? So we definitely want to see your work. We want to see your best work. Um, the deadline to commit to submit those uh, creative work samples for scholarship consideration is January 15th of 2021. Additionally, on top of that, um, the FAFSA is not required, but is strongly encouraged when you are going out for these um, talent based scholarships. Um, a portfolio or audition is required when it comes to our BFA or BMUSE programs. Um, more so if you want to do a direct entry program. Uh, there are some precise materials that are required for those portfolio submissions and they do vary um, from discipline to discipline. Um, some of them do require, um, well, I'm not really sure how that's going to look this year. Um, we're, we're definitely getting, getting settled into that, but some may require some um, either on, on campus auditions. There may be some auditions that you may do live um, via like Zoom or some sort of virtual experience. Um, and there also may be um, some interview processes as well. Um, so you'll definitely complete um, information on the submission requirements and process. The, all that stuff can be found on our website if you go to column.edu slash BFA. Um, and also, once you uh, do go through the application process, um, you will have a application like update portal. Um, and you can find more information there as well. Um, that is column.edu slash connect. So we definitely covered a lot of information. I know it can be a little overwhelming, but we do have some really, really cool stuff um, that does happen on our campus. Um, besides all of our um, like thousand of events that are happening on campus on like a yearly basis, um, every single spring we do this event called uh, Manifest. Manifest is um, our annual urban arts festival. 
It's the biggest party of the year. It's a huge celebration of amazing talent of our students, of our faculty, of our staff. Um, but we are really, really like trying to highlight um, those graduating seniors. Uh, it's free, it's open to the public, um, and you should definitely come and like check it out if you can. Um, during this event, there's a whole bunch of like gallery exhibitions, live performances, fashion shows, original game designs, literary readings, uh, and so, 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 so much more that it, that's happening on campus. Um, and last year, which is pretty cool, we did have a virtual manifest. So um, if you can, you can definitely check it out. Um, you can definitely find more information about Manifest and definitely check out Manifest from last year um, at manifest.calum.edu. And then just to wrap things up, um, if you all have any questions, you can definitely put them in the chat box. Um, just know that these are all the folks who are representing the Chicago area, uh, more specifically like Chicago city proper Chicago. Um, so you can either get in touch with myself, Victor, Margaret, or Marie, um, who does focus on the art-focused CPS schools. Thank you, thank you so much, TC and Victor. So as um, TC just mentioned, we are here to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to go ahead and drop those in the Q&A. Um, and even if you are not from the Chicagoland area and you're looking for somebody to just ask a few more questions, you can always feel free to reach out to one of us. And even though we might not be your Columbia specific representative, we can answer your questions and also get you connected to the person who is your representative. So um, without further ado, definitely encourage you all to go ahead and pop those um, questions that you might be thinking about in the Q&A. TC and Victor, since we don't have any questions just yet while we wait, I do have a question that I would like you all to both um, maybe give an answer to in regards to how Columbia specifically is dealing with um, its response to COVID-19 and the way that classes are offered and the way that um, residence halls are structured, those sorts of things. If anybody wants to speak to that, that'd be great. Yeah, I can definitely give a little bit more information about that, Margaret. Thank you for, for asking that question. Um, I definitely feel like Columbia has, I mean, they've really blown me out of the water and like, my expectations of what we can do at the institution. Um, you know, I like to say, even as a student, that we have always been innovative and at the forefront of like um, creativity and, and art and, you know, really being like on the edge of like what's coming next, right? Um, with that being said, yeah, we, we definitely experienced COVID and, and, you know, what's going on um, with like, um, you know, the pandemic and all that stuff, just like every other institution, and we were able to like quickly adapt. Um, so right now we are offering classes in both, um, you know, some are in person, some are hybrid, um, meaning that they meet uh, virtually and in person, and then some are strictly um, virtual. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely on a more like uh, course by course basis. Um, so definitely be on the lookout and making sure that when you are going through the registration process, um, that you are paying attention to whether or not those classes are, you know, a hybrid, a web based or in person. Um, and we can definitely go through the, all that information once we actually like, you know, reach that bridge with you all um, to speak more about it. But again, like, I really feel that Columbia did a really excellent and phenomenal job um, adapting and taking like those really like hands-on creative courses um, and making them virtual, especially like last spring, um, you know, when things were like really bad with the pandemic, um, you know, we were able to send students like materials that they needed for those courses, some of those courses, um, we were able to provide, you know, some resources in which like students could go get this material that they were needing for like, that pottery class, right? That suddenly got switched to a virtual setting. So um, I'm really, really excited to see what's gonna be happening, um, not only just this year, but like next year when, you know, the class of, ooh, what class is that? I don't even know, but- 2025. Yeah, ooh, I'm getting up there. 2025 is coming in. So um, 
yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see to see what we, we what we do next. Thank you for that response, CC. It's really appreciated. Um, still don't see any questions in the Q and A, but I do want to acknowledge that sometimes you know careers in the arts are questionable. You know, parents might be really concerned when their students are pursuing those types of creative disciplines. Can you all speak to a little bit more about our career center and the things that they offer our students and a little bit more about our job placement rate? Yeah, um, hi. Uh, so it's really important that all students get to visit our career center and schedule an appointment with a career advisor. Um, the res resources are available to you. Um, I know in high school it might be a little different where maybe your teachers will push you and say, go speak with uh, your counselor. Your counselor will come and talk to you. In college, you have to come and look for that resource and information. Um, so we do provide a lot of resources. Our Career Center provides um, individual one-on-one -on -one sessions with a career advisor who's there to assist you in applying for internships, to assist you in guiding you during uh, your time at Columbia College in regards to more of that career center focus. Um, they're also there to help you figure out where to do your internship. If you wanna do your internship here in Chicago or in a different city or in a different country if that specific program is offered during that semester. Um, if you're interested in applying for the semester in Los Angeles, be sure to speak with a career advisor. They're going to help you uh, apply during that whole process and the application. Um, other specific majors and programs also have specialized programs within their specific discipline. So be sure to ask your advisor and be sure to visit a career advisor for more of that additional information. Um, at the career center, you will also be able to sign up for workshops, workshops that pertain to portfolios, to pertain to resume development, um, anything to market yourself, business classes to know more of the legal terminology of your specific discipline. So anything related to your special focus and what you're uh, majoring in, the career advisor will be there to assist you in uh, learning more about how to how to kind of navigate during that time, either during Columbia or after Columbia College. And a lot of our alumni are also come and use the resources there. So just because you've graduated from Columbia, um, that doesn't mean that those resources are not available to you. So you're an alum at, at Columbia, so you can still continue to use the resources at the Career Center. So make sure you visit the Career Center. You can learn more about that online and be sure to set an appointment with the Career Advisor. Thank you, Victor. And another thing that I'll just point out about just career development is that it doesn't start when you're a second semester senior who is looking for a job frantically. It can start literally your first day. So um, as Victor mentioned, it's important to start fostering that relationship with your career advisor because they're the folks who are going to be kind of the gatekeepers of all the internships that exist or all the jobs that exist. So if you, you know, don't have a relationship with them, they don't know to recommend a job to you. So as long as you continue to foster that relationship, they'll know, you know, hey, Margaret, I know you said you're interested in this. This internship came, ac came across my desk. Let's get together and start talking about what you need to do to prep for your interview and those sorts of things. So our career, um, career center staff, they're really, really great about helping students along their journey. And in our most recent survey here at Columbia, 90% of our students report being employed within their field within one year of graduation. So, um, in the same way that like as an engineer or a doctor or whatever sort of field you want to go into, you have to kind of do that, that legwork to get to where you want to be. The same thing exists in the arts. So um, if you are, you know, questioning it at all, just know that like over the last, over this pandemic, artists were the people who were able to kind of convert really quickly and still continue to create and still continue to generate revenue. Whereas some of those more stable jobs were not, were not necessarily performing well, or maybe were furloughed or those sorts of things. So um, the arts really does give you a plethora of opportunities and a lot of different ways to kind of bend, um, to continue to create and to continue to make money. So there's money out there for you in the arts. Um, you just have to be about your craft and about your stuff um, as far as like your business and um, your creativity um, to make sure that you are generating revenue. Um, 
we do have a, right around 10 minutes left, um, and I still don't see any questions in the Q&A, and that's totally fine. As long as you all have taken our contact information down, we definitely don't want to hold you um, any longer. So if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A. Um, but if not, um, we will go ahead and conclude in about two minutes. TC or Victor, do you all have anything else you want to add about applying or um, anything related to Columbia? Yeah, I normally, um, I normally just leave students with, um, I don't want to frame this, like, I am a Columbia alumni, right? Like, I went to this institution, I originally went to school for musical theater performance, um, and quickly learned that that was not for me. Um, but when I was at Columbia, I was fortunate enough to have really great academic advisors and faculty advisors um, to speak with and really guide me through and ask me those tough questions about like, what do you want to do with your career, right? What do you want to do with this, this degree that you're about to obtain? Um, and when everything was said and done, I ended up leaving Columbia. Um, I majored in what was marketing communication where I studied public relations. And I um, minored in business entrepreneurship studying um, what was it called? It was called Live and Performing Arts Management, which is now um, under the music, music business umbrella under Live and Touring. Um, so I ended up leaving Columbia with this degree and I have had the time of my life. I have been on major tours with like Bon Jovi, with Miley Cyrus, with um, not Rihanna, I met her, but not on tour with her yet. Um, but, you know, I've done some really, really amazing things working with Lollapalooza here in Chicago, Austin City Limits down in Austin, Texas, and really, um, you know, pivoting from my career on stage to my career behind the stage. Um, and, I, and I say all of this to say, like, as an artist, as a creative, like, do not be afraid to make those pivots, right? Um, do not be afraid to take those courses outside of your major that may add to your skill set, right? Um, so yeah, you may be coming to school for fine art, um, but what are you doing outside of that, right? How are you becoming a better, like, um, art business, like, professional, um, a creative professional, right? Um, so taking those accounting courses, taking those classes in marketing and um, in, in gallery um, exhibition like management, making sure that you know not only are you adding to your skill set, um, but you're becoming a little bit more marketable and a little bit more exposed in order to make those pivots when we are right in a pandemic. <laughs> so um, yeah, definitely do not be afraid to to you know go on the other side of your creativity and learn something new that may benefit you in the long run. Well, seeing no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and conclude it here for today. Um, so thank you all so much again for joining us for this presentation about Columbia College Chicago. It was a pleasure having you all here. Um, this recording will be available within a week at IACAC.org. So if you didn't get a chance to scribe down our contact information or anything like that, you can always go back and watch the recording. We do also encourage you to continue to sign up for more sessions to just learn generally about the college application process or the college search process process as a whole. There's also several um, additional institution specific presentations happening this week. Um, when you close your window today, there will be a quick four question survey. We do um, really encourage you to go ahead and fill that out to give feedback for our presenters, but also for um, our staff for this program. So, you know, should this pandemic continue and we continue to have to offer things like this, we'll be able to make the program as best as it can be. So once again, thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of your night.